You joined me in the shitty webcam dimension, which surprisingly looks like my room, and I'm here to tell you about the one true LGBT icon. The Curb. It's Pride Month, we gotta play a gay game, but instead of one of those actual gay games, why don't we play Kirby Star Allies, bitch? Oh my god, did that come off too strong? Probably a little. I love loads of game series that are made by Nintendo. I love Zelda, I love Animal Crossing, I love Mario. But one of the game series that they've made that I've never really explored is Kirby. I played Kirby's Adventure on the NES, and that game's fun, but it's not anything special. But this, well, this is something special. He's an LGBT icon. Kirby Star Allies is a game that I never really intended on playing. The reason I didn't intend to was because I was worried that I'd be spending 60 quid on a game that I would finish in 5 hours or less. That doesn't mean that I thought that the 5 hours I would have with this game would be bad, it's just that as a student I prefer spending large amounts of money on games that I'm going to be playing for longer than 5 hours. I know this sort of attitude contributes to companies thinking we want live services, which are shitty and manipulative for multiple reasons but I just can't help wanting to get the most bang for my buck, you know? I only actually ended up playing this game because my friend Jay offered to trade it with me. He wanted to play Binding of Isaac, a game I was struggling to play because, well, I'm terrible at video games, and he wanted to trade it with Kirby Star Allies because he wasn't having much fun with that game. And so, that was about a year ago, and recently said he wants to trade back because he's having no fun with the Binding of Isaac. And I was like, that's fine, but I should probably complete this game now. So. I did, and that's why this video exists. So, that's enough preamble, let's talk about the fucking game now. So first off, as you can see, there's a lot of shit on this menu. One of the things I thought before going into this game was that it wouldn't have very much content, but this game actually has quite a bit. More modes are unlocked after you complete the main game, but before we do that, let's have a look at the two extra things that are available right off the bat. The first mode I'll talk about is Star Slam Heroes, a mini motion control minigame mode. That's a lot of M's. It's pretty fun, but I can't see people playing more than 10 minutes of this. It is kind of generic, and kind of is just the beginning of the baseball minigame from Wii Sports. But I don't know, maybe it'd be better with more people. I was playing it by myself. You know, a multiplayer minigame. Alone. In my room. Just swinging a remote. God, I've gotta get some friends, jeez! So, the next mode I played was Chop Champs, a mode that I think is a little bit shit. Or am I just shit? I think it's maybe the second one. So for some reason, I've played games like Cuphead, I've played Celeste, I've played a little bit of Dark Souls, but for me, the hardest game I've ever played is fucking Chop Champs. I don't know what it is, but I think it might be the visual overload and the amount of colors on screen, but I just can't play it. It's so hard. I have this dream of being a games journalist as well, and I'm just terrible at video games. Wait, actually, I think that'll be fine. So now those two quick modes are done, let's talk about the main game. So in this Kirby game, you're trying to stop someone from resurrecting the Dark Lord. What, like, like Satan? If I'm being honest, I wasn't really paying attention to the plot, because let's be honest, who out there is actually saying, I play Kirby for the interesting stories. The main reason people play Kirby games, if we're being honest, is, it's cute, he's pink, and it's fun to suck people up. Oh. Oh, that sounds bad. But if I was to guess from what I've played what the story is, it's basically, Kirby's gotta fight these emo dudes who have like, elemental powers, and then they all sacrifice themselves, and then he's gotta fight a big emo dude. That's the fucking game. Also, he possesses you. Let's not think about this too hard. Stop, Matthew. Stop it, Matthew Patrick. Hey, everyone, it's Matt Pat, and here's my video on why Kirby is literally Satan Hitler, and he's coming for your soul. <laughs> Oh jeez. Basically, Kirby games are more gameplay driven experiences than deep enriching story games. This isn't a bad thing. Not all games have to have a deep plot. Some games can just be dumb fun. Without the focus on story as well, each game's focus more on a different gameplay dynamic. Recent Kirby games all have a gimmick. Like what if Kirby was made of clay? What if Kirby was made of wool? What if Kirby was a literal Gundam? This game is no different. It asks the question. What if Kirby could make an army out of his enemies by flinging hearts at them Pokemon style? Wait a second, is Kirby committing war crimes? Holy shit, Brian, get on this right now! 
The gameplay dynamic of flinging hearts at people is a lot of fun. It means that you kind of develop a party like in an RPG. It also means that Kirby doesn't have to suck up any enemies that aren't fun to play as. He can just add them to his party and they can do the stuff for him. Like who likes flings the statue? Fuck that shit. Just a little side note, but my favorite abilities in the game are the artist one, it's really cool painting stuff for your gang to use, and splashing paint on everyone is super cool if we've learned anything from Splatoon. That's fucking ink, you dumb shit. Shh. I also love the cowboy one. The whip is super satisfying to use, and Kirby just looks so cute in his little cowboy outfit. And I'm gonna be a basic bitch here, but the one where you basically are Link from The Legend of Zelda is probably my favorite. It's just so fun to be Link. Is it though? Is it really? There are these special times in the game where you get to do a bit of collective bargaining, I mean a group ability. Of course, there's the friend train where Kirby and friends turn into a train and kill anyone in their way. You know, friend stuff. There's the friend star, which turns the game into an arcade style space shooter, which switches up the gameplay so much and also is used in a really crazy way at the end of the game, but we'll get to that later. And of course, there's the friend circle, which sounds like a cult thing? Join the friend circle everyone. One of the main highlights of the game that I haven't talked about yet is the level design. There are only four worlds, but every level in each of those worlds are really great. Even the water levels are fun, which I thought was impossible. There are other little fun side things to do in these levels as well. There are fun collectibles to collect, like the jigsaw pieces that make a big jigsaw puzzle. These are fun to collect and add a little bit more variety to the gameplay. There's also a button in certain levels, which unlock a little special stage. These special stages remix the gameplay of the other stages, and they're so much fun. There's one in particular that makes it look like time is passing, and it's really clever, and I love it. Okay, it's spoiler time. Again, it doesn't really matter, it's a Kirby game, they're not very story driven. The final boss of this game is absolutely incredible. Probably one of my favorite bosses in any game ever. It's a battle of epic proportions. The game suddenly turns into like Star Fox in all range mode. It may not be the hardest boss ever, because it's quite easy to avoid his attacks. But oh my god, beating him is so much fun. I'm using the word fun too much. But it just is so much fun! And it probably was the best way to end this game. Oh wait a minute, there's some extra shit. After you beat the game, you unlock a bunch of other modes. Let's go through them quickly. First off, guest star, question mark, question mark, question mark, or star allies go. Which one is it, Nintendo? This mode is a way to quickly run through the game with friends and stuff. It's a lot of fun, and you get to play as any of the enemies in the game. I picked the sword guy, because again, I'm a basic bitch. It reminds me most of Smash Run from the 3DS Smash Brothers. It's kind of like a speedrun mode as well, where you're trying to finish the game as quickly as possible. I did not get good times in this game because there was a bit where I genuinely got stuck for like 30 minutes, but I did okay, I'm gonna say that, even if it's not true. This mode is a lot of fun, and I could see it actually at arcades, that could be kind of fun. Work on that, Nintendo! I don't want you to overwork your employees though, please don't do that, crunch is bad. There's the ultimate choice, which is a Kirby boss rush mode. I put this on the medium setting, cause again I'm shit at video games. I did pretty well, I had a team of all cowboys, and we fucking whipped the asses of all of those bosses. Did that sound too kinky? I hope not. And finally, an adventure in another dimension. This mode is an extra hard mode where you collect hearts. I am terrible at it. This is probably my least favorite extra mode. Not because it's very hard, but because it's very unforgiving. If you miss a heart, you miss a heart, bitch! And it kind of forces you to play as certain characters. And I like the element of choice in the other modes. Also, the stage design is fairly generic because you're playing through the same stage basically four times. And don't get me wrong, the first time you play through the stage you're like, whoa, that's beautiful. But then like the fourth time you play through it, you're like, okay, I, I got it. But hey, I get that's just me. Maybe you really enjoyed this mode. Tell me in the comments! So overall, I'd have to say that I really enjoyed Kirby Star Allies, and it definitely is actually worth the money. It didn't take me long to complete the whole story mode because it is very short, but it's a short and sweet package and doesn't need to be any longer than it is. You still may not be sold on buying the game just for the story alone though, and I completely get that because it is really short, but all the extra modes make the game infinitely replayable, which is something that is awesome about the game. It's fun in single player and in multiplayer, and I recommend it either way. I played it mostly in single player, which was still fun, but when I played it in multiplayer it was also great. And before I hand it back to Jay, I'm going to be doing that a lot more. The drop in, drop out couch co-op style of it is really awesome, and I love how Nintendo Switch games are doing that. So yeah, I really recommend the game, and I really, really enjoyed it. So if you can, I recommend you check it out. So yeah, happy Pride Month everyone, and remember to stay safe out there, for the curb.